show me. I'm the Marcellus Film Freak, and I watched Fistful of Vengeance. It's not a western, doesn't star Clint Eastwood, and I don't know why it has this title. Fistful of Vengeance is a 2022 Netflix film directed by uh, Roel or Roel uh, Rainey? I don't know. It looks... European, and I'm not good with European names, uh, and stars people from Wu Assassins, because this is a Wu Assassin sequel. Eco Weiss, Louis Tan, uh, Lawrence Cow, uh, Francesca uh, Corny, uh, some more people here, Juju Chanzetto, of course, and Pearl Thusi, and Jason Tobin. Jason Tobin is here this time from Warrior, and he's in the movie. The movie's also lacking people. Uh, from the previous, from the show, but I will get to that after I tell you what this is about. So, again, this is a sequel to Wu Assassins. Picks up what feels like several years after the show, and is, it, it, it only pretty much brings back the three guys and Juju Chanzetto, and, um, they're in Thailand now. Uh, they're hired by a billionaire to find somebody and kill them before that person brings it upon the end of the world. But it's pretty easy to look at this billionaire and just know that that's not a good dude. Because anybody who has a bodyguard who looks like Simon Cook probably can't trust that guy. As I said, the show is missing people this time around. Uh, the show does not have Lee Jun Lee, uh, who uh, played Jenny in the show. However, they do at least explain where she is. She's dead. She got killed. We see a flashback where they find her body and there's hair on her face because it's definitely not that actress. Uh, they did not bring back Catherine Winnick, who that bones me out because she was one of my favorite characters from that show. Uh, they don't explain where she is. She's just not there. And they also don't bring back Celia Ow, which that bums me out because even if she didn't really have that much to do, her character kind of brought atmosphere to the world because she was like the spirit that told him what to do and getting rid of that just kind of feels like it leaves him wandering. Having her character in the show, you don't realize with it not with her not there, but it really added like context and like a complexion to the show atmosphere that you don't realize is gone that it is there but until it's gone. And I don't maybe it's just because I liked the show more than some people. You know, I didn't love it. I had great expectations for the TV show. It didn't really meet them, but I enjoyed it. I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I burped. A lot of people really did not like it, but I did. I liked a lot of elements of the show, and it feels like it just threw most of it out. But I am happy to be back in this world with these characters, with the abilities. I enjoy some of the way that the abilities are used. Really just one way, I guess, kind of specifically, and that is like any time a character with powers, which is mostly just like the force, they don't really do a whole lot with some things. Like they say like, oh, because he's the Wu assassin, he's stronger and he, he's more durable, he's, he's faster. They don't really utilize that at all. Uh, but like they've all like anybody with powers like can put up like a force field or like can force push pretty much and anytime they're like falling from a great height they'll like push off the ground so that they can break their fall I enjoy that that's really the only way they use their powers that's creative but the the thing that's that bugs me about being back in this road with these characters and it feels like several years have passed as I said is it feels like this is a series finale of a TV show that should have had three to four seasons because characters have developed, characters have changed from where we left off with them in the final episode of season one, the only season, and that could be character growth, it could be they've got superpowers now, it could be that they can fight now, and they just kind of write that off with like two lines. 
Like, Juju Chanzetto was just a dope fighter at the end of the first season, and then all of a sudden she has powers in this, and they just write it off with her saying, I guess you're not the only one who's special. How'd she get them powers? And then because so many characters didn't come back for this, like uh, uh, Lee Jun Lee, I think I said, and Catherine Winnick, they just introduce two more female characters and just tell us, like, through two of the other characters, oh, I met them before. I know them from the past. And it shows us, like, a quick flashback to them meeting. But that's not something that happened in the show, so we just kind of roll with it. That's like... It's like if, if you got to Fast Five, if you got to the fifth Fast and Furious movie, and Ludacris, Tyrese Gibson, Gal Gadot, and uh, Han, whose name I can't remember, that actor's name, Sung Kang, maybe? Uh, if, like, it's like if they all just showed up in the fifth Fast and Furious movie, and Dom and Brian just had to go, Oh, we know these guys. Good to see you guys. And we just roll with it. But that wasn't the case. We had met those characters. We had established who those characters were, and we were cool with them. I, I checked out at Furious 6, Fast 6, Fast and Furious 6. I, that's as far as I'm going to go talking about Fast and Furious. At 1 hour and like 38 minutes, the movie is, it's, look, it, it's not that the movie is like too short, because like, you know, you don't mind a movie that breezes by. It just feels like the movie needs more. It needs more action, it needs more character, it needs more dialogue. And it and it feels like it edited large sections of character development out because it's just there's so there's a few just odd editing points. Like at one point it just jumps to a conversation between two characters, but it's like the final monologue that somebody has of what feels like was probably like a three minute conversation. And so we get this monologue, and it just feels random, and it's like, that's good. What are you talking about? Because that is, the, we've, we, we see you on the screen, and you just started talking. What were you guys discussing up to this point? And it feels like if the movie sacrificed character development for runtime, I'd have preferred some character development. And this isn't really like a criticism of the movie, but like it, it really gave me the feeling in the show that as, as Iko Weiss's character Kai, who is the Wu assassin, he goes around taking down all these elemental Wu warrior people. It felt like as he like took down somebody, he would then give that ability to one of his friends so that he would be the Wu assassin and then like his buddy would be the Earth Wu, the Water Wu, the Fire Wu, all this stuff. Maybe I've just watched too much Mystic Knights as a kid, but I wanted some of that. And you know, the movie wasn't quite that, that's not what it, but that's not really to the fault of the movie, that's just what I made up in my brain. So you can't fault the movie for that. What is this, The Last Jedi? No, I'm not going to do that. One last thing before I talk about the action here. The movie was really weird with licensed music. Granted, I only recognized one of the songs, but the whole movie is just full of licensed music that it's like you couldn't put anything else here. Like, at one point, they're sneaking onto a compound of, like, one of the main bad guys. And they went with Eminem's Phenomenal from the movie Southpaw. I wonder if this movie has anything to do with the studio that made Southpaw because they could use this song for cheap because that song couldn't be cheap. I wonder how much budget of this movie went into getting that song instead of into something else. But other than that, it just didn't fit the scene. Because I don't know if you've heard Phenomenal, it's a pretty upbeat song. What about sneaking is, is Eminem's Phenomenal? It's, it's very baffling. And it sticks out. It's just, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. I mean, think about it like this. Think about it if you're watching like a Bond movie. Bond movies, what, you get like one, maybe one licensed song. The rest of it's great score, beautiful, wonderful score, and a great song made for the movie. And imagine he's just like sneaking onto a compound and all of a sudden you just hear Eminem's, I don't know, Not Afraid. You'd be like, why is Not Afraid playing? You'd be very confused. I was very confused, but let's talk about the action. <sighs> the action is... I love everybody involved in this, and that's never a good thing when I have to start something with that statement. <sighs> I would say the action in this is mostly fine and acceptable. But I might be lying to myself. 
and it makes me feel really bad because I hate when I like everybody involved in something but then I don't like the movie. And I'm not saying I didn't like the movie. I'm just saying that some of the fight scenes the editor needs to chill and not in the way i would say for like mortal kombat or snake eyes or something else you know the editor needs to chill in that because there is a crew the crew is hardly ever doing the same thing at the same time like at least i'm gonna talk about fast and furious some more because the crew and the whole thing the music this movie does give me some fast and furious vibes so with the fast and furious Everyone's usually doing about the same thing, or there's maybe two things going on. You know, at the end of Fast Five, I'm gonna go back to Fast Five again because Fast Five is my favorite Fast. Maybe Six. Six is really good. Uh, you know, w what is the final final climactic uh, f action sequence of Fast Five? It's 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 the chase with the with the safe. Everybody in the crew is pretty much involved in that chase. It's like the only thing going on. So, you know, whenever you're bouncing back and forth between characters, you're only really focusing on that one chase. But then, you know, look at Fast 6, you know, maybe there's two things going on, or, you know, Fast uh, uh, Furious 7, pretty much still two things going on. There's a chase, and then there's a fight scene. In this, there's always at least three things going on. You know, you've got Lewis Tan doing stuff, you've got some other people doing stuff, and then you got Eco Weiss doing stuff. Usually, at minimum, three things going on at once. And the movie never wants to focus on one particular fight scene. It just wants to bounce back to the other one. So you know you're gonna, you're going to see a few a few lines of dialogue and and movements uh, going on between Juju Chan and Zeto Juju Chan Zeto and Iko Weiss, and then you're going to bounce back over to this person, and you're going to bounce back over to this person, maybe back over to this person, and then back to Iko Weiss. I just it it's it it struggles because it misses a lot of things. I think of like like Three Dragons movies, you know, and not everything is going to be as good as a Hong Kong movie. Yes, true. But in this is a long video. In uh, let's go Wheels on Meals. They don't need to bounce back and forth between Jackie Chan fighting uh, Benny the Jet Yurkidez and Samo Hung and then Yuan Biao. We accept that all of these fight scenes are happening at least at once or very close together. We're gonna see the entirety of the Jackie Chan fight, we're gonna see the entirety of the Samo Hung fight, we're gonna see the entirety of uh, Yuan Biao's fight, and then we're gonna wrap it all up in a nice little bow. The same could be done here. We can see the entirety of Juju Chan Zeto fighting Iko Weiss. We can see the entirety of uh, Louis Tan fighting the guy from BKO Bangkok Knockout. Very happy to see that guy. I think he's also got a show on Netflix called Monkey Twins. I've only seen one episode. Thai shows are weird. Um, and then you can watch, you can see the other people fighting whoever they're fighting. But when you bounce back and forth between each one, you miss a lot. We don't really see that much of Juju Chanzetto fighting Iko Weiss, even though it could be potentially the best fight in the movie. We see the beginning of it, we see a little bit of the middle of it, and then we see how it ends. But the ending is not satisfying if you don't tell the story of the fight scene throughout. If we only saw Jackie Chan knee Benny the Jet Yurkidez in the face and him almost go flying out the window, we wouldn't care if we didn't see how we got there. The story of the fight scene. The story of a fight scene is amazing. We would not care if we saw Bruce Lee snap Chuck Norris's neck if we did not see the story of the fight scene play out. If you don't see the story of a fight scene, you do not care about how it ends. Even if you have a built up history of the characters from the previous show, that makes you want to see the story more. The story of the characters is more important than how it ends. The story of seeing these characters who met in the show and hate each other, you want to see them tear each other apart. You want to see them go at it. You want to see them get in each other's faces and have this communication through violence. But if you only see how it ends, then you're missing so much. So that's the problem. 
stop cutting between fight scenes and saying, here's what's happening over here, here's what's happening over here, here's what's happening over here, and just show us all of it separately. Also, the choreography, I don't know what's up with it, I don't know, what, I can't explain it, I don't know. It just feels, it feels a little slow and choppy at points. Like, like Michael J. White's uh, Falcon Rising. Michael J. White's a wonderful martial artist. Iko Weiss is a wonderful martial artist. Juju Chan, Zeto, Louis Tan, these people are wonderful martial artists. Lawrence Cow, I believe it was his name, uh, who I'm very happy to see being an amazing martial artist in this movie because that was not his character in the show. Again, character progression that we did not get to see uh, because reasons. All amazing martial artists, something about the choreography did not click here. There's one fight scene at the end that was almost everything that I wanted this movie to be entirely. It's one take, it's, it's a cool, very dynamic one take. It's got a lot of personality. I really did quite enjoy it. But the choreography still, something about it didn't quite click even though how much I did enjoy it. That was something that I felt with the entire movie. None of the choreography ever felt like it matched a lot of what happened in the show. And I know a lot of people had problems with the fight scenes in the show, but Lewis Tan's fight scenes were great. Catherine Winnick, again, the movie doesn't have Catherine Winnick, in my opinion. Catherine Winnick, despite the show having Ego Weiss, was one of the best action martial artist people in the entire show. The movie just didn't reach those things. I don't. Again, I, I can't explain it. The choreography was very slow, felt choppy, and it was. It felt odd. I'm gonna put a slight, tiny spoiler thing here. In the next 20 seconds it's really not that big of a deal like almost at all uh but 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 i just think it's fun i've been comparing this movie a bit to fast and furious uh it it, it does it does end with them hanging out one of them barbecuing and they all cheers to family that seemed a bit odd as i was writing my notes and i kept writing down fast and furious fast and furious all of a sudden clink to family i was like fast and furious it was weird. Anyway, I'm going to give Fistful of Vengeance with its odd title, the sequel movie to Wu Assassins. With it, it's, I, I can't go back and, 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 and summarize all the things I said because I said a lot of things. I didn't hate it, but it's not very good. I'm going to give. Fistful of Vengeance, two and a quarter, I don't know, woo assassins, woo, woo warrior, woo stones, magic abilities, out of five. The movie just didn't have enough of the magic stuff. Like, I actually really enjoyed a lot of the magic stuff in Wu Assassins. I thought, like, the fight scenes, the fight scene between the Earth Wu and Eco Weiss was actually really well done. And the movie just threw out a majority of the magic stuff. People like get some some people like get hit with like a sword or something, or like they're like choked to death or, or something like that, and they'll just like explode into powder. And I'm like, can you explain to me how these people are? Is it a do you need to like do you need to like pour holy water on a sword before you do it when they explode, or does it take like a special kind of stone metal sword do, to do it? The movie just doesn't explain a lot of things. But anyways, tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of Fistful of Vengeance? What did you think of Wu Assassins? Do you want to see another one? Most people, I, I don't know. Do you like Eco Weiss and Louis Tan? Because they need to make better things. Uh, tell me your thoughts on all those things in the comment section down below. I love you both. Please don't kill me and s talk shit about me. I don't know. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, Facebook Martial Arts Film Freak. Martial Arts Film Freak on Instagram, Tristan underscore Glover on the Twitter, Martial Arts Film Freak on TikTok. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.